I'm going to be full disclosure. You were on here because we were going to talk about <laughs> your experience at Capitol Hill, your experience working in a West Wing, all this crazy dysfunction. So you're, you're learning this news as I am. Um, you work in a White House. You've worked in a White House, uh, Alex. So I want to ask you. Um, I think, look, Secretary Kelly, there's no doubt. This will get good reviews. This has been a, a very professional guy. I've had interactions with him. Um, he's a very impressive individual. But there is a lot of aspects of being chief of staff um, that he's had no experience doing. Um, but your quick, your quick take on this Well, the, 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 this was not a surprise. I mean, the situation was untenable. There were effectively two chiefs of staff with the mooch. On a good day, there were two. <laughs> Some days there were three or on four. Day, there were two. But we woke up this morning, and clearly there were two people who thought they were chief of staff to the president. That was untenable. Now one of them is out. The big question, I think, is does the new chief of staff, does he reorganize the West Wing? This is, a this is not about Ryan's previous. This is a recognition that six months into this presidency, it is a, fail a failed presidency. He has not done any of the big things that he promised he would do, and he doesn't have momentum on any of the big things he promised he was going to do. So it's a reflection that there needed to be a shakeup. That's what this is about. I got to think Capitol Hill is looking at this going, Oh, okay. Well, Maybe this will be okay. Yeah, I think there's a couple of different layers of that. I mean, Reince Priebus has a great relationship with Speaker Ryan. On the other hand, he doesn't have deep legislative experience. He comes from the political side of the operation. Right. Obviously, General Kelly doesn't either. But the big question is whether the president is going to undercut his new chief of staff the way he undercut his old chief of staff. The problem with Reince Priebus as chief of staff had nothing to do with Reince. He never had a chance to be chief of staff. Correct. Let's be fair to Reince here. Did, he, is, did he ever have a chance? No, this is, this is the problem. The problem of this president, mm -hmm. who can't pick a course, pick a plan, and stick with it long enough to achieve a goal. And the question is whether General Kelly, with his military background, with presumably a higher level of respect from the president himself, can get the president to focus in a consistent way. I find it interesting. It does come after, basically, on the day after the failure of health care. Uh, and as you just pointed out earlier, Alex, you know, he doesn't have a legislative, a comp major legislative accomplishment. It was teetering toward failure here in, in general. Um, it, it, this is an acknowledgment of that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is an acknowledgment that six months in, this presidency is headed on the wrong track. And most Americans think so. Just look at his poll numbers. They continue to go further and further down. The speech he gave this afternoon wasn't about rallying the nation. It was trying to def defend his base, protect his base, because I think a lot of conservatives are now saying, what's, what's the point of having all three branches of the government if President Trump can't deliver anything? So I think it's a recognition that there needed to be some sort of a reset. Hopefully, he will empower the new chief of staff, as Michael said, to make the changes that need to be done, and he, that he will listen to to this chief of staff, like he, unlike he did his last one. One other aspect of Secretary Kelly here, uh, uh, Michael, is that he does have relationships across uh, across the aisle, and the most successful White House chiefs of staff had that. I'm thinking Leon Panetta, mm -hmm. or I'm thinking Andy Card. Um, frankly, you know, Dennis McDonough over time did. I think your office over time had to go. Sure. Jack Lew, in many ways, you may have disagreed with him on policy, but there was a camaraderie there a little bit. Yeah, I think, first of all, far from draining the swamp, this is the most Washington move you can imagine. Yeah. Big legislative Good failure. Point. Yeah. Heads will roll. Not right. obviously the president, but, you know, we'll make some changes in the staff. Can't fire the owner. Always fire the manager. Exactly. Yeah. The uh, bring in the new coach. And, but, one question, as you point out, is whether this signals that when the president won unexpectedly, and we had Republican control of the House, the Senate, and the White House unexpectedly, they embarked on a very, very aggressive legislative campaign to act with rec using reconciliation, strict party line efforts. It's a partisan legislative campaign. On health care yeah. and tax reform. Health care has wobbled, it seems, to its conclusion. Yeah. Tax reform is next. Presumably, if we can get the budget done, also ideally on a partisan basis, is this a signal that the president is seeing the limits of that partisan-only strategy mm -hmm. and looking for a broader coalition? One thing I felt like that came is that the party still hasn't reconciled what it's for right now. The, the different factions in the party, Alex, whether, and you went through this the hard way during yeah. the campaign, but the different factions, you know, Trump, the president tapped into the to this populist base that sort of empowered them, but you had the business community in another place, you had different uh, factions. But what united them was simply anti-Obama, and that came to an end now. Yeah. W w maybe lowering taxes will unite them, but what does, what role should McConnell and Ryan now play in all this? Well, I mean, obviously, they're leaders of the Republicans on Capitol Hill, and that's an, that's an incredibly important role because the White House... Are they weaker today because are, of what happened in health care? Uh, 
I don't think so. I mean, look, healthcare didn't pass because of President Trump. I mean, it, really, you lay it at the feet of him more than you uh, do. Uh, uh, he, he's sort first of. First of all, he's the leader of the Republican Party. But second of all, no Congress is ever going to pass monumental reforms, especially of the nature of healthcare, without presidential leadership. And where were the presidential speeches? Where were the presidential press conferences? Where were the interviews about healthcare? Reform? Where was the event in Bangor, Maine, Pre for instance, okay, or exactly. Charleston, so, West Virginia? So I absolutely yeah. put it at the president's feet. I don't blame it. Capitol leaders. And yeah. re Republicans are always on bad ground on health care. This is a land war in Asia. This is not one we <laughs> <Yeah>. win. <laughs> Taxes, the economy, yeah. these are areas where we're strong. The Democrats' own pollsters did a, a study that came out, uh, reported today, that white working class voters still say Republicans are better on jobs and the economy by 35 points. Right. That's a massive advantage on the issues that presumably we're steering right into now. Well, and you would have assumed maybe you would have started with that. Uh, but. We could talk well, about that. Yeah, yeah, we could talk yeah, about that uh, in hindsight. Right. Boy, that vision at this point, even is 2100, uh, wouldn't be bad anyway. Michael <laughs> Steele, Alex Conan, thanks for coming in and being flexible. Hey, yeah. nothing like breaking news to be uh, always to engine fun. Friday. Always right? an adventure. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.